Evolution has made the same animal five separate times, and that animal is a crab, which it shouldn't be possible, but it keeps happening anyway. Over the last 200 million years, five completely different groups of creatures from different families all independently ended up the same flat body and tucked tail and big claws. And they did this without comparing notes, which is already strange enough that scientists needed a special word for it. If you watched my video, why does everything keep evolving into crabs, you already know that it's called carcinization, and you know some basics about convergent evolution. And yeah, there's going to be a little bit of repeat information here because I need to explain the crab thing again to the new people. But most of this video is going to be new information because that one is explaining why it happens. And this one is about how completely broken the process is. Because crabs don't play by normal evolution rules. And there's three ways that they break the system. First, evolution doesn't just make crabs. It unmakes them too. Where some groups become crab shaped and then reverse back, which has happened seven times, even though, again, that shouldn't work. Second, some things we call crabs aren't even crabs. They just evolved to look identical from different ancestors. And king crabs came from hermit crabs, which are the opposite of crabs. And third, crabs invaded land 12 separate times. Yep, and there's one preserved in amber from 100 million years ago proving that they were in the trees of the dinosaurs, which is also insane. We'll get to that later. Before we get into how broken this whole thing is, we need to actually define what a crab is. Because it turns out not everything called a crab is actually a crab. And this isn't me being pedantic. This matters for understanding why the whole system is so weird. There are true crabs, which scientists call Brachyura. And then there are your standard crabs that come from crab ancestors. And then there are false crabs, which scientists call Anomura. And these are things that look like crabs, but came from non-crab ancestors. Both of them look basically the same if you're just walking on a beach and you see one. But genetically, they're from completely different branches of the crustacean family tree, which is the first sign that something strange is going on. What makes something look like a crab in the first place? Well, you need a wide body that's kind of round and flattened out. And you need a hard shell on top covering everything. You need your tail folded up and tucked underneath your body where nobody can see it. And you need some good claws for grabbing stuff. That's basically the checklist. And if you've got all of those things, you look like a crab, whether you're technically a crab or not. So yes, you dear viewer, if you've got all of those things, you are in fact a crab. Congratulations, Mr. Krabs. Comment down below if you were in fact a crab. Anyways, the tail thing is important because if you don't have it, you're a lobster. You know, its tail is out there and open doing tail stuff, but a crab's tail is completely hidden under its body. So from the outside, it looks like crabs don't even have tails. In fact, some of you are probably watching this saying, wait, crabs have tails? Yeah. Scientists had to make these categories because they kept finding animals that looked exactly like crabs, but when they checked the DNA, it turned out they weren't related to crabs at all. They just happened to end up with the same body design. Which brings up an obvious question. If different animals keep ending up crab-shaped, something about that shape must be special. So, as I mentioned earlier, evolution keeps doing this thing, and scientists had to give it a name because it was happening so often that they got tired of saying that weird crab thing again. So they called it carcinization, which is just a fancy science word for when something that isn't a crab becomes crab. This is technically called convergent evolution, which is when completely different animals end up with the same solution to a problem, and it happens in nature all of the time. Birds and bats both have wings even though they're not related. Sharks and dolphins both have the same body shape even though one's a fish and one's a mammal. Stuff like that. But here's where crabs get weird, because convergent evolution usually happens between really different groups of animals that are super far apart from the family tree. It usually happens maybe twice if you're lucky, but crabs decided that that wasn't enough and did at least five times, possibly more depending on which scientists you ask and how they're counting and if they're sponsored by Big Crab Incorporated. And all of these times happen within crustacean, which is already a pretty specific group. It's not like birds and bats where you've got a mammal and a reptile descendant both figuring out flight. It's not like there's a mammal crab walking around. It's more like if five different types of birds all independently turned into the exact same shape of bird without being related to each other, which doesn't happen because that would be insane, aka the title of this video. So you've got king crabs, which came from hermit crab ancestors, and porcelain crabs, which came from squat lobster ancestors. Kind of funny that a porcelain crab came from a squat lobster, which makes me think of a toilet, but whatever, skibbity toilet crab. And a few other groups that all looked at the crab body plan and went, yeah, I'm gonna do that without talking to each other first. The important part here is that the common ancestor of all of these groups was not a crab. It was some long bodied shrimp looking thing with a tail. And then separately, independently, these different branches 
branches all compress themselves down into the same flat shape with the tuck tail and the big claws. Five separate times, Evolution ran this same experiment and got the same answer, which is not how things are supposed to work. And honestly, it makes you wonder if Evolution is just lazy or if there's something about the crab shape that's so good it's unavoidable. But it's not because crabs are perfect or anything, right? 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 Are crabs perfect? Tell me now. Well, crab body has some actual advantages if you're a small thing living on the ocean floor and some disadvantages if you are made of butter. And anyways, these advantages are probably why evolution keeps coming back to it. But we need to be clear that these advantages only matter if you're already a crustacean living in that specific environment. So don't expect humans to start evolving sideways walking claws anytime soon, even though I know there's going to be like at least five people commenting how badly they want to turn into crabs. I give you three seconds of crab rave just because I know you exist good crab. Your father crab is proud of you. Anyways, the first thing you need is armor because when you're flat and wide with a hard shell on top, you've basically turned yourself into a tiny tank or a pancake and all of your soft vulnerable organs are tucked underneath where predators can't get at them easily. Compare that to a lobster, which has this long body with the tail sticking out behind it. And that tail is just asking to get grabbed by something that wants to eat you. Whereas a crab has folded its tail underneath itself where nobody can see it or bite it off. So right there, you've already made yourself harder to kill just by changing your shape. The second advantage is that you can fit into small spaces because when you're flat, you can squeeze into cracks between rocks and under ledges and into reef crevices where bigger predators can't follow you. And this is huge if you're trying not to die. A lobster with its big tail has to find a bigger hiding spot, but a crab can just scuttle sideways into basically any gap. And suddenly you've got way more real estate available for hiding. Plus moving sideways turns out to be really efficient when you're shaped like a dinner plate because your legs can push and pull in ways that let you move fast without having to turn your whole body around, which is useful when something's chasing you and you need to get into that crack right now. Third thing is your claws and legs can do different jobs. And this is where the whole tuck tail thing pays off again, because when you're not dragging a tail around behind you for balance and swimming, you can specialize your legs for other stuff. Some legs are for walking, some are for digging, some crabs have legs that turn into paddles for swimming, and your claws can be for fighting or crushing shells or picking up on food or depending on what you need. The crab shape gives you options, and crustaceans are really good at this because their bodies are segmented, so evolution can just tweak one segment without breaking the whole animal. You can't really do this with mammals because we're not built in sections. Our bodies are more locked into one configuration, but crustaceans can rearrange themselves way easier, which is why they can pull off the whole let's try being being a crab thing multiple times. So the crab shape solves a bunch of problems at once. But that doesn't really explain the timing of stuff because crabs have been around forever. And if you go back far enough, the oceans look totally different because they were full of things that are all dead now. Before the Triassic period, which started about 250 million years ago, the oceans were packed with trilobites and sea scorpions and all of these weird armored fish that don't exist anymore. And crustaceans were around, but they were basically just shrimp shaped things hanging out in the background, not doing much. Then the Permian extinction happened, which scientists call the great dying because a lot of stuff died creative. I I know. Anyways, it was the worst extinction event in Earth's history and it killed out 90% of everything in the ocean. And suddenly all of those trilobites and sea scorpions were gone, which meant all of these ecological roles were just sitting there empty, waiting for something to fill them. The ancestors of crabs survived that extinction, probably because they were small and could hide and didn't need much food. And when they came out the other side, they found themselves in a world where a lot of the competition was dead. So starting in the Triassic, crustaceans began spreading out and trying new things. And this is probably when the first actual crabs showed up, although the fossils from this time are pretty sparse, so we can't be totally sure. By the Jurassic period, which is when dinosaurs were doing their thing on land, true crabs were definitely around and starting to diversify into different species. And then something happened in the late Jurassic that really helped them out. Reefs exploded. Modern coral reefs started forming on a huge scale, and these reefs created all of these new hiding spots and hunting grounds in little ecological niches. And crabs were perfect for that environment because they could tuck into the reef structure and scavenge and hunt in all of these tiny spaces. But the real action happened in the Cretaceous period, which ran from about 145 to 66 million years ago. And this is when crabs went completely off the rails. Scientists actually call this the Cretaceous crab revolution, which is a real term and not something that I made up. And during this time period, you get multiple instances of carcinization happening. You get all of these new crab families showing up in the fossil record, and you get crabs spreading to basically every marine environment on Earth. And then they did something truly stupid, and they decided to leave the water because there's something wrong with calling that a crab revolution. 
it's inaccurate. Remember back at the beginning when I mentioned king crabs aren't actually true crabs and I said that it would matter later? Well, it's later now. And this is where the whole story gets genuinely broken because king crabs didn't descend from crab ancestors at all. They came from hermit crabs, which are about as far away from a crab as you can get while still being a crustacean. Hermit crabs are those little guys with soft coiled tails that live inside stolen snail shells because their bodies are too squishy to survive on their own. And they spend their whole lives looking for better shells to move into and they look absolutely nothing like what you would call a crab but somewhere along the line one branch of hermit crabs decided to ditch the shell thing and their tails hardened up and their bodies flattened out and they tucked what was left of the tail underneath and by the time that they were done they looked exactly like a crab even though genetically they're still hermit crabs who just evolved the costume this matters because it means carcinization isn't just one family of crabs branching out into a bunch of different species it's completely separate families looking at the crab body plan and deciding to copy it without comparing their notes. Again, porcelain crabs did the same thing from a different starting point, coming from squat lobsters instead of hermit crabs, skibbity crab. And they also ended up with the same flat body and tucked tail and big claws. What we're watching here is parallel invention on a massive scale, where evolution keeps running different experiments and somehow keeps arriving at the same answer. And the different groups didn't even know the other groups exist. It's not about one successful crab design spreading out. It's about the crab design being so effective that evolution keeps rediscovering it independently, which would be weird enough on its own. But apparently evolution also unbuilds crabs. Decarcinization is exactly what it sounds like. And yes, it's another real word that scientists had to invent because some crabs looked at their crab body plan, decided that they didn't want it anymore. These are animals that evolved from fully crabby ancestors. With all that flat body and tucked tail and all that other stuff that we talked about that makes a crab a crab. And then over millions of years, they just started undoing it, stretching back out into longer shapes with visible tails, basically running the whole carcinization process in reverse. Now you might be asking, why would anyone not want to be a crab? Because knowing all you crazy people, you all want to be crabs. Well, the best example of this is frog crabs, which are still technically true crabs by ancestry. But if you look at one, you would think that somebody left a crab in a taffy puller because they're elongated and their tails stick out and they don't have that classic flat round shape anymore i mean look at this thing it, it it's it kind of looks like a frog i mean it's got a name for a reason but it's also not a frog just making that very clear this is not when a frog and a crab had a baby it's just a crab that kind of looks like a frog what makes this completely absurd is that evolution doesn't normally do this because once you lose a complex trait or change your body in a major way you don't get it back the genes are gone the developmental pathway is broken you move Move on to other things. Whales lost their back legs millions of years ago when they went into the ocean, and no whale is ever going to evolve legs again because that ship has sailed. But crabs apparently did not get that memo. For some reason, crabs is an exception. Crabs are built different. They can do what they want. Should that scare us? Possibly. I can't sleep at night anymore after making this video. Crabs can literally go from long body to crab shape to long body again if the situation calls for it. And the fossil record shows this has happened at least seven separate times. Not six, not six, seven, but seven seven separate times, which means that seven different groups of crabs independently decided that crab life wasn't for them and went back to looking more like their non-crab ancestors. Do you realize how crazy this is? The reason that this can happen at all is because crabs are weirdly flexible in evolutionary terms and their body plan isn't locked in the way it is for most animals. If being flat and compact stops being useful, you need to be able to burrow better or swim faster or whatever, crabs can apparently just reconfigure themselves without everything falling apart. Most animals can't do this. Most animals are stuck with the basic body plan that they evolved into. But crustaceans have these segmented modular bodies where you can elongate one part and shrink another part and the whole animal still works fine. Literally in the same way that you can use this to become a crab, you can use this to become not crab. The crab form isn't some end goal or final stage of evolution. It is just a really good solution to certain problems. And when those problems change, crabs can just bail on the whole thing. And that kind of flexibility is not how evolution typically works for basically anything else. I mean, take mammals as an example of how evolution usually works, because after the dinosaurs died out and left all of these empty niches, mammals spread out and turned into completely different things. Some became bats and figured out flying. Some became whales and went into the ocean. Some became horses and specialized in running. Some became bears and got big and scary. Some decided to lose all of their hair and spend all of their time 
doom scrolling on Twitter all day. Every major group of mammals went in a different direction and ended up with a different body plan. And you can tell they're related if you look at their bones and DNA. But a bat doesn't look anything like a whale, and a whale doesn't look anything like a horse. That's normal evolution, where one starting point branches out into a bunch of different endpoints, and each branch takes its own path. Crabs are doing the opposite of that. They have different starting points and the same endpoint over and over, or they have the opposite of the same starting point and different endpoints, and then they go back because why the hell not? They feel like it. Mammals have constraints that keep this from happening to them because their bodies are not built in a way that you can just rearrange the parts. You've got four limbs, you've got a spine, you've got a skull, and all of that is pretty much locked in place. You can't easily add or remove body sections or reorganize your skeleton without breaking everything. So mammal evolution is about tweaking what's already there, making the legs longer or shorter, making the teeth sharper or flatter, stuff like that. Crustaceans don't have that problem because, say it with me again, segmented bodies. Evolution doesn't reverse major changes in mammals. Whales will never walk again. They will never come back on land. That is something I can promise to you. It is too complicated and the genetic instructions are gone. Crabs can do this though. Crabs can eventually just do that. Crabs don't care. Crabs do not care. Now you're probably starting to realize that crabs are just genetic freaks of nature. And here's where I tell you that they didn't stop at the ocean floors. In fact, they have broken the map altogether because they didn't just try leaving the water once or twice to see how it went. They have left the ocean at least 12 separate times, which means 12 different groups of crabs all independently figured out how to breathe air or live in fresh water. And this has happened across millions of years during and after the Cretaceous period. Some of them moved into rivers and lakes, became fully freshwater crabs. Some of them started living on beaches and in forests and became land crabs. And some of them went full commit and now live in trees, which seems excessive, but we know now that crabs do not stop. There is no stopping the crab. We know this has happened way earlier than a lot of other creatures though, because in 2021, scientists found a crab preserved in amber from 100 million years ago, which is an amber is a tree resin that is hardened into a fossil. And the only way you end up in tree resin is if you're climbing around in trees when you have no business being there. This crab fossil pushed the timeline for land invasion, and yes, that is a very specific word I am using for a reason, back by 50 million years. Because before that discovery, the oldest land crab fossil was only about 50 million years old. And scientists had assumed crabs were ocean-only creatures for most of their history. Turns out they were wrong, and crabs have been experimenting with land life way back in the dinosaur days. And the amber preserved everything, including the gills, which showed this crab was somewhere between fully aquatic and fully terrestrial, probably living in streams or wetlands near forests. Now we've got crabs living in basically every wet environment on the planet. Deep ocean, shallow reefs, rocky shores, sandy beaches, rivers, lakes, swamps, rainforests, and even deserts if there's water nearby. Coconut crabs climb palm trees and crack open coconuts with their claws, which is a sentence that should not be real, but it is. And they can weigh over nine pounds, by the way, which makes them the largest land-dwelling arthropod on Earth. At this point, it wouldn't surprise me if crabs can one day fly. The pattern across all of this shows that crabs aren't evolution's final answer or some perfect form that everything's supposed to turn into eventually. They're just a really effective solution to specific sets of problems that show up when you're a crustacean trying to survive on or near the ocean floor. Again, the crab body plan keeps getting discovered because it works so well for these specific situations. And when you are a crab, you can ditch it once it's not useful anymore. Evolution is not moving towards crabs as a goal. It's just that if you're a crustacean and you need armor and mobility and hiding ability and good claws, the crab shape ticks all of those boxes at once. So you end up there whether you plan to or not. Nature literally cannot stop building crabs even when it probably should try literally anything else. At this rate, I am not surprised if you and I become crabs one day. Who knows? Maybe crustaceans will evolve to look like mammals one day. They've already got frogs. What's stopping them there? This message is apparently sponsored by Big Crab now because they own my channel. Like this video and subscribe for Big Crab because Big Crab means Big Crab. Then you can watch this one, which is also sponsored by Big Crab because it's also about crabs. Have fun with all the crabs. Bye bye.